if you want certainty in clinical practice of medicine, you're living on the wrong planet. <laughs> um, um, there is so much we don't know, and maybe it's just an internal honesty. Um, one, of, one of the things I will often joke about is um, I, I know how little I know, and I am terrified about how little other physicians know. So welcome to Wellness Wednesday. And for this week's Wellness Wednesday, we have an excerpt from my interview with Dr. Neil Nathan as part of the Fatigue Super Conference. Dr. Nathan is one of the practitioners that I most admire and respect, who's working with uh, chronic fatigue, Lyme disease, uh, fibromyalgia, that, that, that group of illnesses. And he's also the author of the book, uh, Toxic, Heal Your Body from Mold Toxicity, Lyme Disease, Multiple Chemical Sensitivity, and Chronic Environmental Illness. It's actually a, a, a bestseller, and it's a, it's a very, very well-written and, and laid-out book. One of the reasons why I appreciate Dr. Nathan so much is I think he, he comes from absolutely the right place in terms of his, I guess, his entire approach and career, which is that... The, the, the care of and the understanding of the patient is always been at the heart of it. And from that, there is a, a humility and a sincerity and a curiosity, which I think is part of the reason why he's been an innovator in the way that he's learned to understand this group of, of, of conditions. And that's really what we, 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 we're exploring in, in this excerpt from his interview. Um, I ask him a bit about his background and, and, and why he approaches the patients in the way that he does. And humility is, is one of the things that comes up. So I think you're going to really enjoy this, this excerpt. Dr. Nathan is a, is a really extraordinary practitioner. Dr. Nathan, thank you for joining us. I think a good starting point would be to understand a little bit about how you got into, into this field. So what drew you to this group of patients, which for many people are, they walk into their office and they're kind of the last person they want to be seeing. You've made a career of being curious and passionate about understanding this group. So yeah, I would love to hear about what, what inspired that for you. <clears throat> okay, two answers to that question, Alex, and thank you for having me. Um, first, I've always been wired, if you will, strangely in that I have always wanted to help every single person who ever walked into my office. And I recognized very early on in my practice career that I was going to have to learn a whole lot more than what I learned in medical school if I was going to do that. So early on, I began to study um, acupuncture, homeopathy, emotional release techniques, hypnosis, uh, and the list goes on. Um, osteopathic manipulation. Every single one of these wasn't a cure-all, but it really helped certain people improve their health. So that as my, if you will, tool bag increased in size, I was able to help a whole lot more patients. And I've always been fascinated by not just the patients I could help, but much more interested in the people I couldn't help because they were the ones that I thought would teach me a lot more, and they have. So rather than, um, which we see a lot in medicine, and I know chronic fatigue patients have been treated by dismissal because they're too complicated or too difficult or something, um, I, in fact, was intrigued by them, which is, that's fascinating. Why do you have that? And is there anything that I know that I can do for you? So within that context, um, by the 1980s, I was the medical director of an inpatient chronic pain unit in which I was using my skills to help patients who had had chronic pain for a long, long time and able to help a lot of patients who other people had given up on. We began to see in the mid 80s a, an illness which was then called fibrositis now called fibromyalgia, which was quite odd. And strangely, there was an epidemic so that we were seeing a lot of patients that I had never before seen in my practice who had chronic fatigue, cognitive difficulties, difficulty with sleep, 
uh, uh, bowel, gut issues, uh, bladder issues, uh, headaches, migraines. Um, these all fit together. We didn't understand how. And it was originally assumed by most people that this was a psychogenic illness because certainly nobody could have all of those things. And when we attempted to treat them with um, psychotherapy or anti-anxiety agents or antidepressants, these didn't help at all. So it became very obvious to me early on that whatever we were dealing with was not primarily a psychogenic illness, but something very real, and we needed to get to the bottom of it. And over the ensuing 25 plus years, 30 maybe, we have learned a great deal about chronic fatigue, ME, and what causes it and how to treat it. So it went from being a mystery to an actual very curable, treatable illness in my experience. What do you think it, it's been about your, your approach to medicine and your approach to your patients that it's allowed you to have that level of curiosity? Because I think often physicians and practitioners, there's an inevitable kind of longing for certainty. And there's a kind of comfort that comes from knowing the steps to go through with, with, with people. And what I notice with, with people such as yourself who have spent decades going deeper and deeper into these immensely complex areas is that there's a there's somehow a fundamentally different attitude, like a different way of looking at the, at, at the patient. And I'm, I'm just, before we come into to more of the the kind of the, the, the details of the understandings that you've come to, I'm just curious a bit more about what served you or what supported you in having the attitude you think? Well, first of all, um, if you want certainty in clinical practice of medicine, you're living on the wrong planet. <laughs> um, um, there is so much we don't know. And maybe it's just an internal honesty. Um, one, of, one of the things I will often joke about is um, I, I know how little I know. And... I am terrified about how little other physicians know. <laughs> so it's, it comes from not a false sense of humility, I hope, but a true understanding of how little we understand about the human body, the amazingly complicated ways in which all the systems of the body interact and connect. And, and I think that medicine has been taught in, in a way that does the practitioners a disservice. The essences of medicine in the past were, let me figure out what you have, label it and treat it. So if you have a, a sore throat, I will test you for the strep bacteria. If you have it, I will give you penicillin, you will get well and we will all be happy. That's nice. Um, in the world that I inhabit, I don't see that all that often. What I'm seeing is an increasingly toxic world with many, many, many more complicated components. So illness that I see, all chronic illness, I don't even care what it is, by definition has um, endocrine components. Any chronic illness is almost always caused by some inflammatory issue. So what is inflaming the body? And that word what, needs to be looked at in a very um, grand way, if you will, meaning it's never just a strep bacteria, which that's, that's a nice simplistic model. But we're now smart enough, wise enough to know that um, the human body requires a multi-system analysis approach. That simplistic approach is maybe okay for an acute illness or injury. But for anything chronic, we need a different model. We need a model that takes this complexity into effect. So we can talk about structural issues, energetic issues, endocrine issues, neurological issues, gut issues. They're all involved. It's not, if you begin to understand how complicated the body is, everything influences everything. So any other approach doesn't make any sense to me. 
So I hope you enjoyed that clip of Dr. Nathan's interview. You can watch the full interview as part of the Fatigue Super Conference. You can still um, buy the recordings if you, if you missed the conference when it happened. So tomorrow on the vlog and podcast, um, I wanted to expand a little bit more on yesterday's session where I was talking with Alex about the importance of listening to, uh, to one's body. And the, the title is Your Body Knows Best. And I'm going to kind of get into a bit more why listening to the body is so important and some of the things that can help and support in that process. So I look forward to talking with you tomorrow on Everyday Alex.